Do you ever get into a manic state where you throw yourself into work, meeting people, or even just rotting in bed so hard that you suddenly look around you and realize you're living in a chaotic mess? Hello. Hello. How are you? That was me during the past few weeks, and all this trash and mess and clutter is zapping away all of my energy. But today, that is changing. So in this video, I'm going to declutter and organize my entire home. The goal here is to give myself a nice little life reset so that I can focus properly and meet all of my goals by the end of the year. So if you didn't already know, I recently shot a short film at our house, and that was super, super fun. Our living room was basically used as craft services break green room and then me and Vincent rotted in here playing video games Starfield because we were so tired from the shoot so you can see we have some wine bottles some random plates and bowls everywhere so clearly the first thing to get my life together is to clean up and throw away all the trash that's been piling up in this entire fucking house Time to clean the bedroom. There's a lot of clothes everywhere. I need to put all my clothes away rather than letting them pile up on the bed, on the floor. And then I'm going to put the clothes that I no longer wear on eBay so I can make some of that money back. That would be nice in this fucking economy. And then I'm going to sort all the clothes that I should not be wearing anymore. I have this problem. Vincent really hates that I don't really like dressing up. You make me look bad, because I like to at least look presentable, because mm -hmm. I have self-respect. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> the, the most I dress up is for these YouTube videos. If I can be in an old raggedy t-shirt with a bunch of stains on it all day long, I would. But that's not good for me. <laughs> I'm going to put all that in a bag to donate and actually go donate it. Let's do this as fast as possible or no it's going to take as long as it needs to take patience shannon <laughs> patience <laughs> Good morning. It is a few days later. I've made some sales on eBay, so let's package some things together. So recently I've been thinking about why I've been a lot happier lately and a lot more creative. I've been wanting to make videos. The fact that I even want to be on camera is kind of an unusual thing for me. I always say I kind of hate it. Why I do this job, I don't really know. I think it's because for a really long time, I felt really self-conscious on the internet because after I quit my job at Disney, if you didn't know, I used to work in Hollywood as a storyboard artist for studios like Disney and DreamWorks, etc. I didn't like it, so I quit. Quitting that job, I think, is very unlike quitting a lot of other jobs because I had to dedicate most of my life to the pursuit of art, not just a career. It wasn't like I just went to college and then got a job doing whatever and I can do whatever else. No, to become a working artist in Hollywood, you had to train and had to love art for most likely since you were born. So quitting a job to me wasn't simply quitting a job. It wasn't just a change of career. In a way, it felt a little bit like a death. A personal death, like I, a part of me died. Being an artist was my entire identity. When you love something that much, it kind of has to be. And in order to get a job in Hollywood, it kind of has to be. So when I quit, I just lost sight of who I was. Which basically means I lost a lot of self-confidence because when you're not sure who you are, a lot of insults, criticism, and whatever that people can throw at you hurt you a lot more. I didn't realize it at the time, but when I started taking YouTube very, very seriously, I was starting to lose my sense of self. I was losing a lot of self-confidence, partly because of all the criticism, but I don't think I can blame the internet or everyone throwing the criticism at me completely. I was the one affected by it. I didn't have to be affected by it, but I was. And it's difficult to admit because most people won't have sympathy for you when you admit that kind of thing. They'll be like, oh boohoo, people are like calling you mean names on the internet, whatever. I used to be that way for sure. I definitely don't think people understand how thousands of hate comments 
directed towards you or even like a few can really fuck with your head a little bit and you have to have a self-confidence of a psychopath to not let that shit affect you but i'm a big girl and i of course do not want to let shit like that affect my day-to-day -day life so I keep on keeping on. To be honest, making art and YouTube videos became less and less fun because there's just so much criticism on the internet. I feel like I'm being judged and hated on for literally anything. People can pick apart whatever. They will argue about anything with you. Things you never thought anyone would have a problem with. So I found myself, especially with YouTube videos and recording myself, holding back a lot more. I think it became really hard to even smile on camera. It became really hard to show who I really am. All my weird goofy tendencies and bad jokes. And I don't like admitting this because it gives people who dislike me and the haters or whatever a lot of power. I feel like I changed the way I acted because I didn't want people to criticize me. Not intentionally though. I think it's a very subconscious thing. It's not something that I think most people can help. You can think, oh, when I make YouTube videos, when I make TikTok content, that's not gonna happen to me because that's definitely what I thought. But ho, oh, it happened to me. But recently I feel like I found my identity again. I've found a little bit of what I consider my life's purpose, which I know can change, probably will change, I thought my life's purpose was to become a storyboard artist in animation. Look how that turned out. Because I found friends, because I found purpose in life, I just feel a lot more comfortable in my own skin. I don't know if I can say, I'm okay now, everything's fine, because I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I do feel a lot more comfortable filming myself. I'm not so scared of judgment all of a sudden and criticism. I feel stronger, maybe because I feel like I have people behind me that know who I am. I think when you're on the internet and you encounter any amount of criticism, usually it's very personal attacks that people like to throw at you. I think the unhappier the zeitgeist is, so for example, right now, everyone is struggling to live and exist. People are generally unhappy I think people will take it out on people on the internet, people who basically choose to put themselves out there to be judged, and they get really personal with the attack. They really want to hurt you. That's their goal here. When you've gotten used to the internet, part of you is kind of numbed to all the criticism, and instead of really fighting it, you just kind of let it be. And when it feels like you have a lot of people constantly on you about how bad a person you are, you just start to just assume everyone thinks you're a bad person. In your head, you know that there are lots of bad people in the world. They go to prison. They do extremely, extremely illegal things to people. The average person spouting their bullshit on the internet is not a bad person. But still, you come to believe you're a bad person. And I think I just felt that way for a really long time. Even though I knew in my heart that's not true, I just felt that way. But when you have people around you in real life who care about you, who know that you are anything but a bad person, you are just trying to exist like everybody else in this fucking planet, it helps. It really helps. It really helped me regain my sense of self. So now that I've kind of found myself again, I feel a lot more confident. But more importantly, I'm excited to do a lot more creative projects with my time. And in a more genuine way too. Like I don't like forcing myself to film myself be happy when I'm not. Because of all that, I've been doing a lot of thinking about who I want to market myself to. Who is my audience? Who, who are you guys? I would like my content to make people feel less alone. I think a lot of people don't get the opportunity for intimacy and friendship these days. A lot of people want it, but they don't want everything that comes with it, like the maintenance, the reciprocal relationship of this. But for you watching me, you're just watching me. You don't have to do anything for me other than maybe like and comment and support me. <laughs> but other than that, you don't have to like go out with me, deal with my bullshit problems. You get the nice part of friendship, time, <laughs> my time. But I don't know, what do you get out of watching my content? I'm 
always very surprised by what it is. I assume you guys relate to me and my place in life. I'm so tired. I know it's only been a few seconds for you, but I spent all day putting stuff on eBay and I feel like I haven't made a dent. I need to give myself a break. So I think I'm going to spend the rest of the night doing some storyboards for fun. <laughs> mm. I'm currently working on some storyboards for this music video that we might shoot for a local rapper in town. It's been a while since I've storyboarded anything properly. I usually do a bunch of thumbnails. So for example, the short film that we just shot, I thumbnailed everything out. So I basically boarded it, but it wasn't super detailed. They have really nice, pretty looking boards would have taken a long time, uh, which w wasn't exactly necessary because I was directing it myself. As long as I can communicate my chicken scratch to my crew, it was fine. I know, especially for bigger and bigger projects, I want to do very detailed boards. It's been a while though, so I'm a little rusty, so I'm not quite as fast as I used to be. Turns out, getting my life together doesn't happen in a single week, even though I really tried. It's a work in progress. As much as I wish things here looked Pinterest-worthy and sparkling clean, it doesn't and probably won't for most people. Regardless, doing all of this has already helped my mental well-being a lot. I don't know, these are just things that I'm trying to do to help myself feel better. What are some of the things that you're doing to help your mental well-being during these tough times? Let me know in the comments, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.